Hi, I'm Mark Loftus, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Post TV. Today I'm joined by Jesse Carosi of Sim International, and he's the Director of Workflow Services. Jesse, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, we've covered Sim over the years, and uh, obviously you guys have a broad spectrum of services and locations even throughout North America. I know you do dailies, I know you have editorial, space for rent, uh, mm -hmm. picture finishing, sound post-production, but you've got something interesting going on in the metadata front uh, that could be valuable to a studio that's moving through the post process. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So that would be MetaBank, and that is a service that we offer now, and it really started from the standpoint of cataloging, cat, cataloging metadata for ourselves. We used to have uh, documents, whether it be Word or Excel, and then we wanted to start collaborating on those, so those got pushed into Google. Eventually, we put those all into MetaBank, and the idea was take all of our technical specifications, technical documents that we gather during pre-production, of asking, because we as a, on the dailies front, we go to so many departments and we're gathering so many specs to know that how are things being done on set? How are the dailies going to be delivered to ensure that a smooth conform happens? We're also involved in some of the sound work. We're also involved in the VFX IO. There's a lot of information that goes through a lab. Usually that goes into documents, but the lab usually keeps on hand, but it doesn't really get put out and become a usable asset, in a sense, to make other work more intelligent. So the idea was centralize that and then start centralizing all of the metadata that we gather from various sources. So the simple one is gathering camera metadata. Okay, that's easy enough. We've been doing that for a while, but now let's take the sound metadata. Now let's take the scripty notes. Now let's take the visual effects data wrangler notes and take any kind of digital documentation that we can, collect it all into one central database, and then connect that with the camera masters so that we can do some more intelligent transcoding. You know, you, you see a lot of transcoding applications that are cloud-based that are popping up now, it's great. Mm -hmm. The thing is, what makes an application more powerful than another in this sense is, well, among many things, but um, is, the data that it's using to do its work. So in this scenario, with access to all of that various metadata, it can be a lot more intelligent. So simple things like, hey, I want to you know, transcode for a promo and I want to re-add the sound, but hey, remember dailies actually slipped the sound because it wasn't jam synced probably, or there was, a, you know, the, the sound and video time code are often off by a frame or two or something like that. Okay, use that metadata, re-slip it for that export. Hey, I want dailies color applied or I don't. Oh, I want dailies framing applied or I don't. I want to inject the metadata from this person or this department and put it into the files that are going to the effects as an example. You, know, you can really control a lot of things by aggregating that data. Where, is it collected on set? Is it collected during the dailies process? Or, like, obviously you may have a soundtrack coming from one device. You may have camera information. You may have uh, lens information. I mean, so how are you actually putting it together just with so many different sources on set? and, and this creating? Is, yeah, this is the really tricky thing. And this is why it took a long time and why we used it as an internal tool before ever taking it client facing to really hone this in. You know, the, every camera even has different, if you looked at everything in an ALE as an example or a spreadsheet view, every camera has different naming conventions for simple things, even like a color space or a gamma, or even resolution. These are very simple pieces of metadata, but even these are different depending on the camera. So we had to create mappings to say, this is a Sony Venice, put that information here. This is a uh, red, put that information here. And so in terms of your question about how do we deal with each source, honestly, each one is really treated in its own unique way because we don't want to get in the way of the filmmakers. We really, or any of the creatives or technologists that are on the job. So, however, you know, Scripty, as an example, they have a MetaBank export option in the application. 
VFX Data Wrangler notes on set, that's not quite as simple because everyone's using a different application. Some people are literally using spreadsheets. So all mm -hmm. we say is give us a CSV. That goes to the lab, just like any media that comes from set during a break off or wrap. That comes to us. We upload that into the site. And where this really starts to get tricky is how do you then merge that data with the camera masters and all of the other data because there's a lot of human error involved in a lot of these scenarios. I think that right now this is a stepping stone to you know, one day I'd like to believe that we'll be going directly off the camera, the metadata will go into a database and everyone collecting this metadata on set. Instead of us gathering that, fixing the human errors, uploading it into the central database, I'd like to think that if it was all communicating with that central database during capture, we'd eliminate a lot of this human work that has to go into it to, to fix some of these things. Is uh, your solution there at SIM, is it cloud or is it internal at, within the facility? I know you have a lot of locations, so I would have mm -hmm. to think that. So it's a combination. Um, depending on the situation. So why don't I talk uh, uh, about, you know, a use case where let's okay. say you shoot and your main shooting location is LA. Now I was talking previously about, uh, about this just being scalable. I think that cloud storage is a lot easier to scale than our internal SANS at SIM. You know, we don't have, just petabytes and petabytes just sitting there waiting to be used. If we mm -hmm. look at the amount of work we do, we can't have every show's media all online. Right. But if we put it in the cloud, we put it into S3 compatible storage, it can scale as big as it needs to go. And, and we don't have to be worried that, oh, crap, we bought a 150 terabyte SAN, but now it's 200 terabytes for this job. We need to buy a whole nother SAN. Like, it yeah. does, it's just all good. It just scales. Right. And, and, and same with computing. So the computing is all done through Amazon. And what's really cool in, from a geeky perspective is that if you shoot one unit in, like I was saying, LA, you upload that media to a West Coast region. Now you go and you shoot in a different country, a different region. You could upload the media into that region and then it takes longer to upload media to different regions. So maybe you just keep it in that region, but then the system is smart enough to say, okay, the VFX editor has submitted a pull request to turn over files to VFX. One of those shots came from US West. Spin up a virtual computer in US West and render from there. Now the second shot in that same request is actually coming from the East Coast or a completely different country. Spin up a virtual computer there and render back to one central location for people to download from. And at that point, it becomes a lot quicker. And, you know, as an example, Watchmen, which was a job that we recently used this on, they actually said at the top of the job, if you don't have an automated VFX pull tool, you can't do VFX pulls on the job. So um, that, that was key. And, and, it, and it really takes something that is, even if you have a great, process manually it's still going to be hours to turn this kind of a thing around we're getting pull requests with 200 plus shots every pull and wow. yeah and that was minutes to turn around is watchman a show that was going across sim as far as multiple services were you working with outside studios as well so that one we actually did provide a lot of services on on that not quite all of our services now you have to understand sim like you said during the intro has a lot of things but we even have camera and we have grip and lighting and we have studio mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and sound editing and like it's a wide gamut but on that one we did do a lot of the services and the dailies were controlled through us which was convenient because the metadata capture could be captured in a way that we wanted we're working on trying to get this to a place where we don't require dailies to be done by us um but a lot of like i was saying the how automatable a lot of these tasks are really depend on how it's captured. Mm -hmm. And so it really helps when we're doing dailies, but we were also doing the finishing as well, which was nice. Wow. For somebody who wants to know more about MetaBank or your services, do you, can we direct them to your website? Yeah, they could go to SimInternational.com 
and they could look there. We've, we've also got a couple blogs I've put up there. To be honest, though, we don't really market this too much except one-on-one -on -one interviews and, and really show people one-on-one. -on -one. We're not really putting out too many advertisements that, mm -hmm. you know, are really um, a, a jazz piece for the thing. We just let the clients speak for it, to be honest. You know, we have jobs like that one. Watchmen that had 28 visual effects companies working on it all across the globe. It was, it was a really, really hard job. They then finish that job, tell other people the success stories, and, and that kind of carries it. And that's kind of been our mantra from the beginning of this project. It's not, we haven't really put out many marketing pieces on Understood. it. Understood. But I guess if somebody's going to be using any of your services, whether it's dailies or something, knowing that this is an option for them could be an attractive uh, feature. Yes, for sure. And, and it, it goes into especially today's world where we have our conforms and onlines happening right now. And it's, we can't have people in our office switching tapes in an LTO autoloader. We can't have people unplugging and plugging in hard drives. So this kind of a tool being used even for the conform, you know, we can talk all day about our online editor working remotely, but that online editor can't work unless the media is online. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of tool that really helps with that, where it, we have everything on MetaBank. We upload the EDL or uh, whatever is necessary to do the conform. That consolidates the media into the appropriate spec or trims it, keeping the camera neg as an example. Now the online editor can go in and do the remote work. But um, yeah, it's definitely being used across all of posts for various things, promo pulls, conform, and VFX pulls. It's just whatever is a mathematical situation that doesn't require a creative input from a human. Mm -hmm. Understood. Well, Jesse, mm -hmm. we want to thank you for taking a little time telling us a little bit about it. And uh, if you want to know more, again, like they said, go to your website, siminternational.com. Thank you.